So, here's my file fish.txt. That's actually a really bad name for a data file. Because what I might wind up with is, I don't know, more fish.txt. This is somebody else's data file with date, species, count, and I will just say that on 2012-07-27, uh, Marlin 1, 2012-07-28, Shark 1. So, not much data in this file at all. Okay, and now I've got um, Carla.txt. One of my collaborators, Carla, sent me a data file. And it's in the right format, date, species, count. And her observations are from May. Uh, she saw a turtle. And she saw lots of turtles. It was turtle migration season. OK. There's no pattern to these file names. I mean, fish.txt, OK. And then more fish.txt, and then carla.txt. Yeah, this isn't going to help me. Um, and I might even have a file from last year, which is 2011. And again, it was May. And Carla's counting turtles again. And it was a bumper year for turtles. This is what most people's directories wind up looking like after they've been doing experiments for a while, after they've been collecting and working with data for a while. You've got thesis, old thesis, good copy of thesis, you know, paper 01, paper 02, the paper with Bob. You wind up with a whole bunch of rather arbitrary names, and there's no rhyme or reason to them. They're about as sensible as the names for genes, and that's not a compliment. If you want it to be easier to work with your data, then the data has to be formatted nicely. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back into carla.txt for a moment. If this said May 5, 2012, then this data would be a lot harder to work with because it's now inconsistent. If I grep for turtle, in carla.txt and carla old.txt, you can see that it's printing out the file name, colon, the line that matched. If I grep dash h, it removes the header, the file name, so that I only get the matching lines. Yeah, these dates are easy, but this one's in a different format. Why is that a pain? Well, Suppose I want to get all of the observations from 2012 from all of my files. That's easy. Grep 2012 in carla.txt, carlaold.txt, fish.txt, and more fish.txt. Right? And then we'll do the dash h to get rid of the file name. There we go. That was easy. But what if I want to get all the observations from May? Well, do I grep for dash 05 dash? And I'll put that in quotes. Whoops. That doesn't work because dash introduces an option, a flag. So I have to say my expression, dash E, is that. There we go, sorry, it was a lowercase e that I need. So, if I'm looking for everything from May, 2012-05-06, that works fine, but I missed the one that actually said May. So I have to grep for May, and that just gets me one line. Right away, this has gone wrong. If I have to do several queries to assemble my data, Eventually, I'm going to forget one of them. Eventually, I'm going to include something twice. And think about how many different ways there are to write the month. Now, the right answer here is to go back and repeat nano. Notice I don't type the command number. I say bang nano. That goes in back and finds the last time I ran the command nano and reruns that. Now, 5-05.
Now, if I grep for that, no headers, the expression is the actual string in quotes dash 05 dash. Right? And I need to do the dash E because otherwise the command will say, oh, that dash there is introducing a new option, but there is no such option. Now it's finding everything from May in all of my files. And I can easily go back and reliably find everything from July or everything from 2011 July. Turns out we don't have any observations from there. The point of this is that the more consistent the data is, the easier it is to select precisely what you want. You don't get any false positives and include things that shouldn't be there. And you don't get any false negatives and forget things that should be there. The same is true of file names. Suppose I want to only look at the files that I got from Carla. With four files, it's easy. I can say WC Carla old and Carla, and it'll give me that. But what if I had 600 data files, or 6,000, and 100 of them had come from Carla? Typing Carla-1, Carla old, Carla November 1997, and so forth, pretty soon my hands would get tired and I'd make mistakes. What if I say WC Carla star dot text? Star is a wildcard character. It matches zero or more characters. So when I do WC Carla star dot text, it says I will match C A R L A and then any number of other characters, including zero, and then dot txt. So that matches Carla dot text. There's zero characters to match the star. And it matches Carla old dot text because the star matches dash old. Okay. What if I want to get just the fish files? ls fish star dot text. Huh, that didn't work. Oh, that's because the extra characters come at the start. So ls starfish dot text. And that matches M-O-R-E, F-I-S-H, and it also just matches a plain F-I-S-H. And if I wanted to catch all of them, ls starfish star dot text. Okay, this looks useful. The star allows me to match patterns in file names at the command line. Well, if I give my files more sensible names, then it's easier for me to select the files that I want. Let's rename, that's mv for move. Another example of Unix command line. Is idiocy too strong a word? Inconsistency, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna move Carla old dot text. Let's have a look at it again. Okay, that's 2011, so I'm gonna move Carla old dot text to be Carla 2011 dot text. And then I'm gonna move Carla dot text to be Carla 2012 dot text. And I'm going to move fish dot text to be uh, Steve 2012 dot text. And I'm going to move more fish dot text to be um, Jerry 2012 dot text. So now all of my file names are regular. Person dash year. And they all end in .txt, so I can say, show me all the files that end in .txt. I can say, show me all of Carla's files, C-A-R-L-A followed by whatever. Show me all of the 2012 files. Right. The fact that the names are regular and that every part of the name means something makes it very easy for me to select the files I want to work with. For example, Let's cat Carla star dot text. That'll get both of those files. Pipe to grep dash v species. That gets rid of the lines that contain the word species because both of these files have a title line in them. Okay. If we just cat Carla star dot text, you can see that we get two files, three lines in each, six lines in total, but it contains title lines. Do that, and it's got rid of species. Do that, too, wait for it. Cut with delimiter comma, field two. Turtle, 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 turtle. Pipe to sort, 
pipe to unique dash C, there were four days on which we saw turtles. Okay, so far, not that surprising. But what if I just change the command and say star 2012? Now I'm going to get Carla, Steve, and Jerry's observations from 2012, and only those observations, and I don't have to change the rest of my pipeline. I've already tested it, and I can see that in total, we saw turtles on three days, tuna on one, shark on four, marlin on three, and so forth. This works because the file names are regular. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can do pattern matching on file names. Please see the online material for the complete list. The key idea here is that if you want your data to be manageable, it has to be consistent internally, and it has to be consistent externally. When you work with larger data sets, you'll wind up with directories containing data files. The same thing applies. You should have consistent naming for your directories. Don't call them first thesis, thesis draft, good thesis, thesis that went to wherever. Have names like thesis dash 2012 dash July, thesis dash 2012 dash August, and so forth. Or even go all the way down to particular days. Now, there's a better tool for doing this. It's called version control. We'll see that later. But when you're managing data, whether it is papers or raw data files, internal consistency so the tools can find and match the things they want, external consistency so that you can find the data sets that you want, and your life becomes much, much more productive. And if you take a look on the website, there's a link to a paper by Bill Noble from the University of Washington, which is a simple guide to doing this for people in bioinformatics, but it applies to all other scientific disciplines as well. So, we're going to take one more break, come back, and do the last of our lessons on the shelf.